Within this house upon a hill you can see inside lives a young girl named Rosemary. Rosemary spends most of her days indoors other than venturing outside to play and explore. Instead of playing dress up and trying on hats, she'd rather play doctor and operate on rats. Rosemary's mother and father then spoke gaining her attention, now putting them all into an awkward intervention. My dear Rosemary, it's such a beautiful day. You shouldn't be inside. You should go out and play. Rosemary narrowed her eyes and quickly declined. She felt much better playing inside. At that moment, her mother has had it. She didn't care for Rosemary's uneasy habit. Exhausted with her daughter's mucking about, she grabs Rosemary by the ear and cast her out. Rosemary sees for now she cannot decline. So she heads off to the library and reads a book titled Frankenstein. Once reading the book, she hatched a clever ploy to construct a friend out of her favorite toy. Later that night, Rosemary takes her bear to the shed, while intense aspiration fills her head. With a contraption she made out of old lead and wire, she made her bear glow within an electrical fire. Rosemary tilted her head, believing her scheme had failed. But the bear raised up, showing her prevail. The next day, both Rosemary's mom and dad glared with fright at Rosemary's adorable abomination she created last night. His name is Sir Puzzlebottom, my best friend ever, and is complete physical evidence for me being so clever. The two frowned in fear, thinking it's far more than odd that their daughter's first act of friendship was to blindly play God. But what could they say? What could they do? They just shrugged and prayed that they get through. A few weeks later, Rose's father felt a bit glum. The only thing that can cure that is a bottle of rum. He walked to his cellar to grab his own ale, and as he opened the door, he gasped out a yell. <gasps> His rum cellar is half empty, all thanks to that bear. What's worse, he didn't even offer to share.
Day after day, the parents' hatred for the bear grows sicker, but the hate spreads more as the plot runs thicker. While the mother was busy preparing cakes and pies, Fuzzlebottom crept in to view with his big yellowish eyes. The bear was hungry, so she offered him a treat as a sign of no harm. But the bear became greedy and bit off her good arm. <coughs> Rosemary and her dad both hurried to the scene of the disaster, leaving nobody to blame but the master. So conflicted by the drama and the act so bizarre, Rosemary sees her precious bear has pushed too far. As Rosemary realizes her terrible blunder, her mother's inner anger bursts out like thunder. I've tried to be nice, but I've reached my end. It's eternal curtains for your little toy friend. Enough, these creations are no more slaughters. It's time you grow up and behave like a normal daughter. Rosemary doesn't know what to do. She'll be losing the only friend she knew. But her parents made it final, which made her feel blue. Sooner than later, Rosemary travels deep within the woods, forced to chuck away a piece of her childhood. Fuzzlebottom really couldn't tell at the time. He was busy enjoying the forest nature and grind. As Rosemary stepped toward the abandoned well, she masked a regretful choice that made her heart fell. said soundly. You're my best friend, so I promise you, in my dreams, we shall meet once again. From that moment on, Rosemary is done with toys. So it's back to the drawing board. This time, it's with boys. I 